Shalom, and uh, welcome once again to another one of our programs on uh, defining biblical terms. I'm Avi ben Mordechai. If you've had the opportunity to catch a couple of our previous programs here, we're in a, uh, a lengthy a lengthy series. Uh, let's call it a multi-series teaching series. If I say lengthy, you probably might think it's going to go on for years and years. Well, maybe. I, I hope not. I hope you'll catch it long before that. But uh, we are looking at a number of, uh, of, uh, of words and definitions that are found in the Bible. When you look at words like grace, truth, light, freedom, salvation, sin, repentance, lawlessness, the word, wisdom, what do they mean? What exactly do they mean? Well, <clears throat> you could probably go by a definition that someone tells you, or better yet, you can read right here in your Bible and get an exact definition right here. Go to your Bible and find out. But what you want to do is go to the Bible that Yeshua and the disciples were using. And what Bible is that? Genesis to Second Chronicles. That's what they were using. We know that from Luke chapter 24, verse 44. Again, Luke 24, 44. And Luke chapter 11 and a number of other places. That was their Bible. Now, if you don't believe me, go take a look and go check it out. But uh, I do strongly encourage you to go get a Bible. Don't come to one of these programs saying, oh, Avi will teach us. Or this guy will teach me or that guy will teach me. Shame on you. Get your Bible. Pull it out. There's stuff in here. You need to read it yourself. Okay? And check us out. Because I could come along and tell you all kinds of things that maybe are not true. And how would you ever know unless you're checking me out according to what this says? So check me out. Go read it. Today we're taking a look at the concept of truth. We've already looked at the word. We've looked at wisdom. And we're going to take a look at truth today. A truth is one of those very elusive words. Truth is... Uh, it's... it's it's, an, it's, it's, it's a subjective word. It's a very subjective... It depends on who you're talking to. I mean, if you're talking to... Uh, if you're talking to the Dalai Lama, I suppose he has his definition of truth. If you're talking to a Baptist pastor, he has his definition. If you're talking to someone who sits in a lotus position and uh, uh, they contemplate their belly button, they also may have a definition of truth as they're going, ooh, the cosmic Christ. And they may have their definition. Everyone has definitions based on what they are doing and what they're studying. And it may not necessarily be the definition that is found here in the Bible. Because this is our definition, what's in the Bible. So let's take a look at the concept of truth as Yeshua, the Messiah, understood it and how is, as he taught it, and how the disciples understood it, and how they taught it. Let's go to their Bible. Got your Bible handy? Let's go. Truth. This is a word that has a deep meaning in Psalm 119, 43 through 44. Do not take the word of truth utterly, out of my mouth, says the psalmist, for I wait for your ordinances, so I will keep your Torah. The Hebrew word here is law. Well, that's the English word. The Hebrew word is Torah. The English word is law. I will keep your Torah, your law, continually forever and ever. Notice here, very carefully, in this psalm, that the word of truth is directly connected, it's glued to the concept of keeping your Torah. Y'all see that? I'm starting to sound like a Texan. Y'all, I'm getting pretty good at that, huh? I'm from Jerusalem. How is it a Jerusalem? I can say the word y'all. I don't know. We can say shlom, y'all. It all works 
perfectly well over there too, so we can just do the same here. Okay, you ready? All you Texans and everybody else watching on the internet and live streaming, let's go on and study the word of truth. Let's go to Psalm 119 and look at verse 142. Psalm 119, 142. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is truth. Your Torah, in Hebrew, the Hebrew word is Torah. You don't believe me? Go check it and look at it in Hebrew. Hopefully you can read just a little Hebrew, enough to be able to check me out. Your law, your Torah, your teaching reign, if you will, from previous programs, your teaching reign, your Torah, is truth. That's what the Word says. That's what the Bible says. Let's go to Psalm 119, verse 151. You are near, yud heh vav heh, that is the eternal name of the all-eternal one of B'nai Israel, B'nai Yehuda, the sons of Judah, the sons of Israel. It's found in Exodus 3.14. You are near, yud heh vav heh, and all your commandments are what? What does it say? Look at it. Truth. There's two places right there. Let's go to a third. Psalm 119, verse 160. The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous ordinances is everlasting. Oh, really? Now that's interesting. Hmm. I wonder, do we have any accountants in, uh, in our audience here? Uh, maybe you're an accountant. Maybe you have, you know, been crunching numbers and counting beans your whole life. You would understand with this concept of the sum of your word. You would understand that. Because you see, all you have to do is add up everything as you find it in the word, bring it forward on a balance sheet, and it will equal truth. The truth of the Bible is here in Genesis all the way to Revelation. It's the truth. It's the word. It is wisdom. It's the sum of and it is called truth. So let's continue on now. And we're going to look at John Yohanan in Hebrew, 1717. This is the Brita Hadashah, the New Testament. Yeshua says, Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. This is Yeshua saying this. Sanctify them. In other words, set them apart in your name. Set them apart in your name. Make them separate in your name. Make them kadosh in your name. Make them holy. Sanctify them in the truth. Make them holy in the truth. Then he says, your word is truth. Therefore, we know the Torah is called the Word. It's called wisdom. It's called truth. But you see, I want to go back to this one slide here. Because there's something that needs to be understood here. You see, if Yeshua is saying, sanctify them in the truth, and he says, your word is truth, and we go back to Psalm 119, verses 142, 151, and 160, where the psalmist says, Your law is truth. Your word, your law, your truth. It's the Torah. Okay? If the psalmist is saying that the law is truth, the Torah is truth, the commandments are truth, and the word is truth. Then you go forward to Yeshua saying, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. This can only mean one thing to any logical, normal, level-headed thinker. Hopefully you are one of those. I hope you are. I hope you're not the kind of person that twists Scripture 
and finds a way around it because you get a little too antsy and you just can't handle it because it's too a little too hot in the kitchen here for you. Look at what Yochanan John 17, 17 is saying. Sanctify them in the law, in the law of Moses. Your law of Moses, your word is truth. No wonder, no wonder in John chapter 8, which we're going to come to a little bit later on, no wonder Yeshua says in the book of John chapter 8, verses 30 and 31. No wonder he says, verse 31, Yeshua says to those who believed, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples. Indeed, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We're going to come back to this verse a little bit later on. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. That means the law makes you free, doesn't it? Hmm. Sounds a little bit uh, different from maybe what you have been taught your whole life. So we know the conclusion of the Torah is that it's the word from previous studies here in this series. We know it's called wisdom. We know it's called truth. Let's go on to another definition that they would have understood in their day. Light. I hear people saying this all the time concerning light. We need to be salt and light. You need to be salt and light? Why? What does that mean? You need to be salt and light. What, are you going to be a salt shaker on a table? Are you going to be a lamp in somebody's room? What are you talking? What do you mean by that? I am salt and light. Hmm. Let's find out. Ready? Let's go to Proverbs 6.23. Proverbs 6.23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the teaching, that is, the Torah, is light. The word teaching here in Proverbs 6.23 is the Hebrew word Torah. Again, that drenching rainstorm from the Hebrew root yud resh he, yore. Okay? The commandment is a lamp. And the teaching, the Torah, is light. Now pay attention. Let's go to Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word, your word, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hmm. Now, I have been uh, a visitor in churches that have uh, uh, used this psalm as a, as a song. Perhaps you might even be familiar with it. Maybe you have even, you know, used it in your own congregation in your music program. Uh, the song goes something like this. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I mean, and it goes on, right? And I've heard people sing this song before. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Now, people will sing that, but they will not keep Sabbath. They will not keep the clean and unclean laws. Some will, but not everybody. Most will not do that. They will sing this song, but they will not keep the festivals or the Shabbat. They will not honor the words that Moses wrote back here, but yet they'll sing this song. The only thing that I can think of is that they don't do that because they don't believe that this really is the word back here. They don't believe it's the word. They believe that when the psalm, psalmist wrote, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, it only means the New Testament. You couldn't really believe that, could you? Oh, you do? You believe that it's only the New Testament? No, no, no. You're saying, no, you're saying it means the, the Old Testament too, right? But that it's only fulfilled in Christ. 
In other words, the Old Testament is fulfilled in Messiah. It's fulfilled in Christ. Therefore, you don't have to do the law of Moses anymore because it's a word that has now been antiquated. It's no longer necessary. Okay, well, I guess let's, let's tear that out now. I don't need that stuff. And, ah, tear that out too. We don't need that. That's the word too. Yeah, let's tear that one out. Ah, God, get rid of this stuff. It's the word. We don't need it. It's only the New Testament. Am I getting a little dramatic? Oh, am I getting a little dramatic? Really? Yeah, I'm getting dramatic, all right. Is this a joke? No, it's not a joke. Am I laughing? No. No, not at all. No, I'm not laughing. Why would I laugh? I wouldn't laugh at something like that. No! I'm not laughing. This is what people say the Word is the New Testament. So why have it in your Bible if you're not going to follow with the whole Word? That's the point. You've watched me do this in previous programs. No, please, don't punish me. Stop tearing the Bible apart. Oh, please. Okay, then behave yourself and I won't do it. Let's go over to the next slide. Psalm 119, 105. Ready? Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path is connected to John, Yohanan 114. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, glory as of the unique one from the Father, full of grace, which is beauty, and truth, which is Torah or the law. Let's continue and study this together. Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. John 1.14, the Word became flesh. That is the Torah, the law. The Mosaic contract, according to our understanding, the whole word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory. Glory is of the unique one from the Father, full of grace and truth, full of the depth of the meaning of what's in this word here. Let's go to the next slide. John 8, 12, please. John 8, 12. Again, therefore, Yeshua spoke to them, and he said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in the darkness, but shall have the light of life. I am the light of the world. Now, wait a minute. The light of the world? What is light? Let's go back again to Psalm 119, 105, and John 114. Your word is a lamp to my feet. That is the law. We've learned that already. And a light to my path. So if the word, if the Torah, if the laws of Moses and the Tanakh, if they are in fact light, and they're the word and their wisdom and everything else that we've looked at so far, if they are light, then John 8, 12 has to mean, I am the light of the world, meaning I am Moses' law of the world, which again goes back here to John 1, 14. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that is the word of the Torah, the light. So again, John 8, 12. I am the light of the world. I am the law of Moses. I am everything that you read about in this Bible. I am that to the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness. Darkness is merely the antithesis to what light is. If you take light out of a room, you have darkness. That's the antithesis. So if you take the Mosaic law out of the world, if you take the teaching of the covenant of the word out of the world, you have darkness. And it's this darkness that penetrates the world today. And you wonder why so many people are so miserable because they are walking in darkness, not light. And this goes even to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 16 and following. Okay? 2 Corinthians 6, 16 and following. You want to go there? We can go there for a quick moment. I'm, it's not part of my overall plan here, but eh, why not? Let's go there. Let's take a moment here. 2 Corinthians 6, 16. What agreement has the temple of Elohim, the temple of God, with idols? Okay, what, what, what agreement has the, 
the house or the temple of Elohim with idols. For you are the house or the temple of the living Elohim, as Elohim has said. And then, watch this quote. I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their Elohim, and they will be my people. But wait a minute. You have to go over here to 2 Corinthians 6, 14 for a little context. Don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What's an unbeliever? What is an unbeliever? That's another word definition. We're not dealing with it directly here, but oh, why not? Let's go. We're already here now. Let's take a look at it. What is an unbeliever? Let's see. For what we can we can get a definition. It's right here. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What is righteousness? We'll look at it later, but that is Deuteronomy 6, 24 through 25. Deuteronomy 6, 24 through 25. That's righteousness. That's the definition. What's lawlessness? Lawlessness is no Torah. In other words, no law. Lawlessness. What communion has light with darkness? What is light? We know what light is here from John 8, 12. It's the Word, it's the law, it's the Torah of Moses that is uphold, upheld by Yeshua. So what's darkness? Can you have the light of, law, of the law of Moses connected with darkness? Absolutely not. Verse 15, what accord has the Messiah with Bli Ya'al or Belial? Bli Ya'al, meaning the, 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 the concept of darkness of the, of the Satan, the, the devil, the Satan. Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? Ooh, look what Shaul, look what Paul is doing here. He's defining that which is Torah, which is, by the way, this right here, the scroll here. It's a baby scroll, but this is the Torah. He's defining what this is with something that is not this. And he says that is what it means to be unequally yoked. If you're unequally yoked with something that is not according to this scroll and what's in here, then you are part of darkness. You're part of the unbelievers. You're part of lawlessness. You're part of bliya'al or belial. You're part of being unequally yoked. Better be careful. Get your definitions straight. I know some of you will say, I've heard this. Some people say, Avi ben Mordechai is a Judaizer. And I'll say, no. I say to the person, no, I'm not the Judaizer. You're the Gentileizer. In other words, you're somebody trying to make me into a non-covenant believer. I'm trying to show you what a covenant believer is all about. I have a Bible here that proves everything that we're talking about. Pay attention to what this word says. Let's go on now to our conclusion about the Torah. It is called the word. It is called wisdom. It is called truth. It is called light. Let's go now to freedom. Okay? Freedom. People say, I'm free in Christ. I'm free, 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 free. You don't have to do anything. Just have faith. I bet you don't even understand what faith is. Uh, we'll get to faith. Oh, yeah. Faith? Faith and faithfulness are the same word in Hebrew. If you say you have faith, you have faithfulness. James, Yaakov says it best. Without works, I can't, I, I can't, I have to have, I have to have works to show my faith. If you say you have faith, I'm going to ask you, show me your works. Show me your actions. So let's look at freedom. Psalm 119, 42 through 45. Psalm 119, verses 42 through 45. For I trust in your word. Do not take the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I wait for your decrees, your ordinances. So I will keep your law continually. Your law, your Torah, forever and ever. And I will walk in what? Liberty. The Hebrew word there is a wide place. We use it for a, a modern a term today in Hebrew for a, a very wide boulevard. 
Liberty, Rehov, a, a, a wide place. I will walk in liberty in a wide place. For I what? I seek your precepts. That's why he has freedom and liberty, because he's seeking precepts. Because the word is the word of truth. Let's go to John 8, 31 through 32, which is what we were looking at on the last program. Yeshua, therefore, was saying to those Jews, those Yehudim, the Jews, who had believed him. Oh, yeah, they were believing him. If you abide in my word, you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. It shall make you free. This is very interesting, because if you are walking in the word... If you're walking in the word, you're walking in truth. If you're walking in truth, you're walking in the law of Moses, the Torah. You're walking in that eternal word. If you're walking in that, it will make you free. Well, that's going to, that's going to challenge us. So for the next program, we'll come back and look at the concept of freedom as Yeshua taught this idea. I'm Avi ben Mordechai. I want to thank you and... Uh, uh, for joining us and pick up our uh, DVD if you wish on our website by calling uh, GLC if you wish. We have plenty of these available and uh, we can get those to you and you can study. So in the meantime, be blessed. Thanks again for joining us today and uh, you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.